Hi folks, my name is Greg Turner, the radiology coach. My job is to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. Thanks to one of our viewers, we have elected to produce a video that addresses x-ray exposure levels to scoliosis patients. The intent is to identify if there is cause for concern for young patients who rely on x-rays as a form of evaluation throughout their young life. Scoliosis is a side-to-side -side curvature of the spine that can affect a person's gait, balance, overall health, and quality of life. It is usually diagnosed in adolescence, and it may be a secondary diagnosis to other conditions, although not always. The cause of scoliosis is not altogether understood, but there are many speculations regarding this topic. Most scoliosis occurrences are benign and treatable, but there are cases where patients are debilitated and confined. The course of treatment in these cases depends on how surgery or treatment will affect the spinal cord, the nervous system, the lungs, and even the heart. If a young person can be treated for their condition, they often undergo extensive full spinal x-ray examinations to monitor the progression of the curvature. This is because the back reaches a certain state where the curvature is now affecting other organs or the individual's ability to function. Then steps are taken to correct or improve the curve in the spine. This includes the implementation of spinal hardware or rods that can correct the deviations to an acceptable standard. The x-rays that the young patient is exposed to will surpass that of your average adolescent. Although each exam isn't regarded as dangerous, the cumulative effect of the x-rays over time can cause concern. Adolescents with a curved spine will receive x-rays every three to six months throughout their young life and into their 20s. When it comes to x-ray exposure, the general population is restricted to an annual dose threshold of 100 millirems or one millisievert. In a 2015 research study, it was determined that your average scoliosis patient receives around 15 millisieverts annually from their x-rays. This is 15 times the amount that is recommended for your average person. But to keep it into perspective, healthcare and occupational workers are allowed 50 millisieverts per year. Thus, the 15 millisieverts that are relegated to scoliosis patients doesn't appear so astronomical. But the point needs to be made that these x-rays are administered during a person's formulative growth years. This creates an added layer of susceptibility. X-rays impact cells that are reproducing at a rapid rate, and the youthful human body is a hub for such an environment. That is why we must be cautious when X-raying those under the age of 21. Still, the exposure levels to the individuals are targeted and calculated to minimize long-term effects. Studies have indicated that scoliosis patients are significantly more likely to encounter cancers, especially females with breast cancer as they progress in age. Breast cancer occurrences in scoliotic patients are as high as 80% over that of those who do not have the condition. When discussing the possibility of cancers of any form, it must be stated that scoliosis comes with a variety of complications that can also contribute to cancerous conditions. As an example, often these patients experience digestive issues due to the impingement of nerves and vessels. This can lead to nutritional deficiencies that can subsequently cause more serious issues. Medications for pain, mental health, and systemic treatment can also be attributed to further complications. This does not exonerate x-rays as an attributing factor to cancer, but physicians and families should always be aware of all of the contributing factors that may be present in these environments. Because research studies do indicate a link between x-rays and cancerous conditions within this population, it must be taken seriously. There are alternative treatments that provide low-dose x-ray or less frequent examinations. It may be advisable for pediatric imaging centers to create protocols to combat breast and gonadal exposure. This could include lead drapes or especially shadow shielding. 
Increased filtration within the x-ray tube can also help to absorb unwanted photons. X-rays of these special patients are a necessary step to prevent the condition from quickly getting worse and impacting their lives in a very deleterious fashion. Medical necessity versus potential exposure levels is always a sticky situation, but in the end, decisions are made based on calculated outcomes and not speculative possibilities. In conclusion, scoliosis patients receive significantly higher exposure levels annually than your average person, but it still does not reach the level allowed for medical professionals each year. Special considerations should be taken to protect this population, but patients and their families can be reassured that the risks of not getting x-rays can far outweigh the disadvantages of receiving them. And even if the patient is receiving doses in the higher spectrum, their chances of developing cancers or other related condition as a direct result of their exams is extremely low. That concludes this episode of Do Scoliosis Patients Get Too Much Radiation? If you like this presentation, please select the subscribe button below this video. You can also tap the bell next to it so that we'll notify you when other great videos have posted. My name is Greg Turner, and I'm the Radiology Coach. And remember, mark my word and mark your films.